Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and I've got a question for you. Is prepping over at this point? For the longest time that I've been doing this channel, prepping has always been an activity that you engage in to prepare for things that may never happen, and if they do happen, it's something kind of far off into the future. Everything that we do with prepping is, to some degree, delayed gratification. That None of this stuff is going to have been worthwhile unless something happens in the future. The, you know, active word there being future. Uh, what we're dealing with right now is stuff that's happening in our present, and it's creating a lot of anxiety and stress in a lot of people, and I feel it too. It's different when you're thinking about something that may, may happen in the future. You're, you're separated both fr uh, from it uh, uh, temporally, it, this is a future thing, you know, so there's some distance there, and it also may never even happen. I know just with the pandemic, it's been weird and different, kind of seeing everything unfold. Granted, the pandemic wasn't, you know, the pandemic that a lot of preppers had been preparing for. The death toll is, you know, re comparatively really low. It doesn't make any big difference if it's your family member that has succumbed to COVID. But, you know, compared to the types of pandemics that people were kind of envisioning, you know, it hasn't been as terrifying as it could have been. Still, if you have a family member that died during it, it doesn't really matter. But, um, you know, it's it's been different living through it. You know, watching the way the government has reacted to it and some of the uh, authoritarian sort of shifts that, you know, preppers talked about that that could be something that could happen in the future and to actually see it playing out, you know, it can create stress and anxiety. How do you deal with the, the stress of, you know, preparing for all that? Because even if you are someone like myself that has done a lot of preparing and you're in a pretty good position, there's still kind of a sense of, uh, and again, I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the, the word stress and the word anxiety, but I do think about things. And at night, when I'm trying to get to sleep, um, sometimes those things are in my head. And it, and it does, I, I don't feel scared. I don't feel worried. Um, but I do think about things, and sometimes that takes a toll on my ability to get to, get to sleep. You know, even just this woodshed behind me. Uh, I've done some modifications to the woodshed since I began the project, uh, putting in the footings in different places. The bolt, There were boulders under the ground. I had to kind of change the shape of things. Uh, so as I was working on it, I was kind of changing it. And at the end of the day, I'm thinking about the work I need to do tomorrow, whether it's woodshed work or getting the pantry ready or, you know, trying to, you know, bring in money so I can, you know, buy food or whatever my job is for the next day. I tend to think about that at night. And sometimes it gives me a little bit of difficulty in falling asleep. And sleep is a really critical commodity at this point, I think, for a lot of us, our health and our sleep. Because uh, it's oftentimes one of the first things that gets thrown out the window, and people, uh, they don't talk about it, they don't think about it, and they don't prioritize it as much as I think that they, they really should. You know, sleep, in our, you know, especially in our society, is seen as, like, that's a weakness. It's like, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> well, you know, if, if you, you have that uh, approach to things, you know, those things may meet up together sooner than you think, because sleep is a really important uh, uh, commodity for your life to make you sharper and healthier, uh, and especially if we are going into uh, a winter when we don't only have pneumonia going around and flus and, you know, all, all these other things, but we have, you know, you know COVID and, you know, if we're gonna be dealing with a difficult situation over the winter, you don't wanna be sick during it. You wanna keep your health up. So how can you try to get better sleep? Uh, I've got a couple of uh, techniques that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, and there are a lot of videos, and I would suggest you go out and search out some other videos because what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for other people. Uh, and I'm still struggling with this myself, but there are two techniques that I use a lot. Um, well, actually three, two and a half. Uh, one of them is, you know, we all talk about screen time and, you know, using your computer and, you know, that's a big part of my life, especially with running this channel. I like to communicate with you guys, you know, do comments, you know, edit videos and, you know, a big part of my life is, well, I, I earn a lot of my income uh, through using computers. You know, I, I, I have a, a children's channel, which I do animations. I have this channel where I share ideas about emergency preparedness. I have another channel that I'm starting about uh, uh, drawing from nature, which is a great way of relaxing as well. Um, but, uh, you know, I... I do struggle with, uh, you know, needing to do a lot of my work on screens. In fact, I love it when I can get outside and do carpentry work. 
the air is clean out here anyway. Uh, it's fresh, and uh, you know I think I feel like it's really invigorating. Um, so, so limiting your screen time, especially during the end of the day, can really make a huge impact on your ability to fall asleep. Now, what do you do? You just like, you know, turn everything off and just and, like sit and be bored? No, you, you should come up with other techniques. And one that I really like a lot is reading. Uh, I learned in college, or my body was trained in college, uh, that when I read, I get tired. <laughs> uh, you know, it was just from, you know, staying up late, you know, doing, you know, you know research projects, whatever. Um, my body has kind of been trained to associate reading with getting tired. So that works for me. Me really well at the end of the day I always try to set aside a half an hour where I can lay down read a book right now I'm reading Lord of the Rings um, and um, it really helps me to kind of uh, calm my body at the end of the day the the light that I'm using is a warm color temperature light um, a color temperature refers to well essentially you could just translate color temperature to color. Uh, it, it talks about uh, the color of the light. And uh, lamps that have a warm color temperature are more orangey or red colored. Lights that have a cool color temperature are more blue or white colored. Uh, if you use lamps in your house, especially the lamps that you're going to be having on, you know, in the evening, and you uh, make sure that you're getting bulbs that have a warm color temperature, they're kind of that orangey, amber kind of color that, you know, a fire makes. Our bodies have been trained to associate that with nighttime and getting ready for sleep. So you sit down, you have a warm color temperature lamp next to you, you do some reading, and I, I'd recommend having warm color temperature lamps throughout your entire house. So when you do turn lights on at the end of the day, it's starting to train your body into, you know, I, I know there's lights still on in this room, but it's a warm color temperature light. It's training you, you know, towards sleep. So doing uh, some kind of an activity, for me, it's reading, Doing it in a warm color temperature light kind of environment can be very helpful. And you know, then at, at that point you have like a, a, a time when you turn out the light and just try to get some sleep. Now what if you can't do that? What if you have a lot of things churning in your head? I know that I feel that all the time when I'm thinking about like projects for the next day, things that I gotta do. You know, I'm still, you know, occasionally doing some runs out to grocery stores. I mean it, you know, the grocery stores are still reasonably effective ways of getting food at the moment. You know, we're looking at things coming down in a couple months that may not continue to be the, the case, but you know, there's still plans. I, I gotta go to the hardware store, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Uh, and sometimes that stuff will just be banging around in my head. Like, how do you kind of clear that stuff out? Well, for me, a great way of doing that is by making lists. And I don't know whether this works for everyone, but it works really great for me. If I have things that are banging around in my head and I just wanna be able to just get them out of my head, I will take them and I will write them down. Uh, and for me, that feels like, okay, I've, I've got it out of my head. I'm not going to forget it. It's there. I don't have to maintain it up here, like in my RAM. Like uh, That's a computer term for like random access memory. It doesn't have to be an active memory. I can put it down on the hard drive, and I can rest a little bit. And that helps me an awful lot. Getting rest during this time is super important. It makes your thinking clearer. It uh, improves your immune system, and it's really important going into this uh, winter season to have a strong immune system because there are a lot of uh, germs going around you know not not just covid you know there's colds and flus and all the other things and if this is going to be a difficult winter you don't want to be doing it fighting with one hand behind your back because you're ill Next time I do a video, I want to talk about another thing that I think is really important for your health, and that is exercise. And I've seen a couple of other uh, YouTube uh, prepping channels talk about that. I, um, Bla uh, not Black Magic, Magical, Magic Prepper did one recently uh, related to the 30 Days of Preparedness. Canadian Prepper is always talking about this type of thing. But one thing that I've uh, not seen, and I, you know, I'm sure there's someone that's out there that's done it, but I, it hasn't come across my radar, and this is what I wanted to share with you guys, is talk about an actual exercise routine. I know Magic Prepper showed a couple of things that he, he does, but I want to go through a, like an entire exercise routine because I know that this is not necessarily part of everybody's life. Now, you look at me, you're not going to say, oh, practice, that's a, that's a, look, at, look at that giant walking pile of muscle. No, I'm not a huge guy, but I've got to wear accounts. Uh, you know, well, these, these trusses, I put them up by myself. The trusses on my house, like gigantic 8x8 board, 16 feet long, doubled up, I, well, tripled up actually. You know, when it comes down to it, you don't have to look like a muscle guy to be fit, to be healthy, and to have uh, like a body that uh, you know is in shape and is fit. Uh, and I feel like I've achieved that, and I would really like to share that with you guys. Now, I'm going to be doing uh, like an exercise video. I'm not going to be wearing like spandex and leotards or whatever people do and those kind of things. But I want to walk you through um, you know kind of what I do to uh, to stay fit and stay in shape. Uh, some of what I do is you know out here you know, doing carpentry work, working outside, that type of thing. But I have a routine that I do when I 
you know, I'm not able to be outside and I'm not able to do a lot of work. Like during the winter time, I'm oftentimes, you know, I am cooped up in, a hu in the house a little more and I have a great exercise routine that I've developed that really keeps me fit and active. And it's honestly the one that I'm doing right now, I think it's the best one that I've ever done uh, for my entire life. I feel like I'm in really great shape and I really want to share that with you guys so that, you know, you can, you'll get your body to be in a place where it is ready for the challenges that are ahead because we don't solve all of the challenges that are coming at us, you know, by, you know, uh, prepping, you know, you get this prepper tool or that prepper tool, or you buy this book or that. You actually have to be able to execute this stuff with your hands, with your arms, with your body, uh, and you need to create a level of endurance in yourself that can work for that. I build buildings, I climb mountains, I do a lot of hiking, oftentimes with my backpack on for just some extra weight. It's a great way of training and I want to share that with you guys. The next video that you see from me will probably be about that because it's pretty important. So get some sleep, prepare with some low temperature lights, maybe do some reading, create a ritual for yourself, but don't slack on the health stuff. I know that in our culture, the, the feeling is like, I'll just soldier through and if you're a real tough guy, it's like, it doesn't matter all that stuff. You know, eventually, even the microbes can take you down if you don't take care of those little things. So take care of those little things and don't forget about them. Just because they aren't exciting, doesn't mean they're not important. That's it, thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.